Welcome to my today's presentation. Um, yeah, my name is Stefan Goebel. I'm from the Institute for Energy Efficient Buildings and Indoor Climate from the RWTH Aachen University from Germany. And today I would like to present our new underfloor heating system model um, for building performance simulation. And yeah, the highlight of the model is um, the easy adaption for all kinds of buildings. And this is realized through automatic design parameterization. Um, to begin with, I would talk about the general properties of um, underfloor heating systems. First of all, it's the uh, low flow temperature compared to radiator systems. Um, this enables um, yeah, um, saving energy saving potential through the use of heat pumps. According to Carnot, the efficiency of heat pumps increase um, by decreasing flow temperatures. Furthermore, we have a uniform heat distribution in the room, which is good in terms of mold prevention, air quality, and comfort. Um, on the other hand side, we have an inert system with uh, long response times, which is not easy to control, especially during um, dynamic days, like, like swing days with high solar radiation. To transfer these properties into a Modelica model, I come to my or to our object, objective of the work. We want to implement a plug and play model in Modelica and the Modelica, uh, the model requirements are then an um, understandable structure, a detailed calculation of the heat transfer and a simple parameterization and a very important um, automatic design according to the European standard. That means we do not want to model an existing system exactly. Um, we want to easily integrate an underfloor heating system um, in different type of building models. So for us, it's important that the model is compatible with the building model from our Excel library, but also from other libraries. So to sum up this, um, we can say the model should be easy adaptable and the system should consider the typical heat transfer phenomena. Um, how does an underflow heating system according to the European standard look like? Um, it can be seen that the, that the wall is divided into several layers and the heat flows from the pipes through these layers. On the top, we have the flowing layer, which is yeah, carpet or tiles or something like this. Um, underneath, we have the heat distribution layer, which is usually out of screed. Um, in this layer, our heating pipes laying on a covering layer, usually mounted on, on plastic brackets. And underneath we find the insulating layer, which is important to, to kind of direct the heat upwards um, so that the main heat flows into the room um, to be heated and only a bit to the room below. Um, underneath the insulating layer, we have the concrete layer for stability reasons and the plaster for design reasons. On system level, an underfloor heating system can be can be understood like this. We have several rooms and per room we have one or even more than one um, heating circuit. Per heating circuit, we have one regulating valve and in a distributor, all the heating circuits are unified to connect the whole system to energy system. Um, this is the reason we divided our whole model in several sub-models. On the lowest level, we have the pipe element model and in this model the relevant heat transfer calculations are done that means also the calculations for the heat conduction through the wall layers so all um, wall properties from the building um, have to be propagated into this model um, on the next level we have the heating circuit model here, the pressure losses are calculated and the discretization through the vectorized use of the model pipe element is realized. Um, on the room level, we um, the, mo the main um, advantage here is the design calculation. That means all the automatic parameterization is, is realized here. 
Um, so the model decided how many heating circuits are needed in this room and, and how long they, they should be. And then on the system level, we have the general parameterization. Um, we have further design parameters and of course the connection to um, the hydraulic connection to the energy system. Um, today, I would, would like to focus on the pipe element model because here are the, the most relevant calculations and on the system level to, to show how to use this model in an, whole, in an yeah, overall building energy system. Um, so to start with the, the pipe element as a smallest model unit, it can be seen as a resistance model. So the heat flows from the water um, in, into the, the inner layer of the pipe, then through the different pipe layers and from there into the distributing distribution layer and then mainly through the um, layers to the room to be heated and partly also to the room below or to the ground. Um, this transferred to a model um, looks like this in Modelica, we realized it using um, water volume for the discrete pipe section. And then the heat flows um, yeah, through, uh, into the pipe. There is um, implemented as a constant heat transfer coefficient for, for, for turbulent flow. So the Reynolds number is high enough uh, in our cases. Then we have the heat conduction through the pipe layers and the heat from transfer from the pipe to the screed. And then we have the um, heat conduction. So here you can find the wall layer properties of the building and also for the um, ceiling. So where the, where the heat flows through the insulating layer into the room below. Um, to put this model in, in the hull, system model um, can be look like this, that we have um, one heating circuit here. This consists out of several pipe elements and even one room can then be, uh, can have one or more heating circuit models. And then the whole system consists out of several room um, models. So on system level in Modelica, then it looks like this. We have um, the underfloor heating room model um, vectorized. So depending on how many rooms we have, we have the distributor to, to connect all the heating circuits and then the heat ports for the rooms. And um, also um, calculation of the design parameters. So the model always gives us um, the design mass flow rate and the design flow temperature. And furthermore, the input signal for the regulating valves. And of course, the connection to the hydraulic energy system. So as I said, um, the most parameterization is, is done automatically through the um, implemented European standard, but still a few parameters have to be set um, in in terms of architecture, it is the number of rooms, the base area of the rooms and, and the um, records for the wall layers. But these are usually already um, from, uh, known from the building. So the building specifies these parameters and you just have to reference it. Um, in terms of, of thermal conditions, um, the model needs the target room temperature. It's important to calculate the design temperature and mass flows. We have the specific heat load of each room and the maximum load surface temperature. So if the, the, max, uh, the surface temperature um, is, is higher than the maximum sur allowed surface temperature, the model gives a warning. Um, you can also set the different, uh, you can also set the number of discretization steps. And for the heating circuit, we can set the, the pipe spacing, the pipe material, the diameter, and the wall thickness. But these parameters um, have default values, so they, are only, they don't have to be set. Um, as I said, we didn't 
um, model an existing system. So it, we were not able to validate this model, but we tried to verify it. And this was done by connecting two different room models to the system. So one room with um, a specific heat load of 100 watt per square meter and one room with 50 watt per square, per square, square meter. And then we didn't use any regulating valve. So we have constant mass flow and constant flow temperature. But these values um, were calculated by the model itself. So just the design power meters. And um, now you can see here the differences between the target room temperature of 20 degrees and the calculated room temperature of the model and the differences between the return temperature of the model and the design return temperature. So this is um, shown for the mean absolute percentage error and it's, it's really quite low because um, this is only the differences between the heat transfer calculations um, we are we have done in our model and um, how the standard um, calculate the heat transfer. So it's about, um, it's just because uh, the standard using, uh, um, calculates the heat transfer by using different correlations and we are using physical equations. Um, so this can be seen as, as verified and to, talk more about the different power meters. I would show you um, the influence of the design on the temperature level. So how does the different wall layers or spacing and so on affect on the temperature level of the underfloor heating system? It can be seen here. Um, I printed for the, for the return temperature. So how does the return temperature is changing if I change, for example, the pipe spacing? Um, but you have to keep in mind that also the flow temperature is changing because we are still using just the design um, power meters, which are calculating by the model itself. Um, the highest influence is um, can be seen for the pipe spacing. So the pipe spacing actually is a trade-off between costs and efficiency, at least if you are using a heat pump. Um, so it's about 3.5 or even more Kelvin. And the other parameters don't have a high influence if they are used in the boundary um, the European standard allowed. Um, the flowing still have a um, relative high influence, um, about 2.5 Kelvin, but yeah, the flowing is actually more a trade-off between comfort and efficiency because yeah, the user decided if, if he wishes a carpet or tiles or parquet, I don't know, that is not really, um, you cannot really plan it um, at the beginning of designing a building. Yes, um, to sum up my, my work, I show a model for an underflow heating system and it's yeah, verified according to the European standard. And um, it's compatible to the high order model. So to multi-zone models um, with our EXIF library. And at the moment, uh, the model is, still, is already working um, in our hardware in the loop test bench. So there we couple building performance simulation to, to real hardware. So it's important that the real hardware, the heat pump sees a um, realistic behavior of the, of the building. And yeah, we would like to adapt the model a bit that it's also compatible to, to the reduce order model um, of our XLIP. So this would be just a one zone model with different kind of um, resistance um, to the wall layers. Yeah, that's all from my side. Thanks for your attention and I'm happy to answer your questions.